Let's get started. In the feature store, I can see all the projects and feature sets that I have access to at my organization. We really encourage public projects that allow you to understand what other people are working on. For example, I can search for telecommunications and I can see a project with a specific goal to reduce churn by 20%. If I go to the side, I can see the projects that I specifically own. When I'm in a project or creating a new project, I have options to give a description of what the project is all about. And then I can also make the project secret or locked. This is a way to keep private projects to a specific group of people rather than advertising them to the full organization, which is really good for very private use cases. In the access list, we can go ahead and grant access to this project to various different consumers at our organization. Some people might want to use this feature set in their modeling work, or others might just need to know about it. And this really allows us to divvy up and distribute jobs around this specific use case. If I go to feature sets and select the specific feature set, there's only one in this project, I can see lots of information about all of the features in this feature set. For example, I can see that pay amount one, it doesn't have a description yet, uh, but I can see information about it, uh, such as the median value and, and how many unique values there are. If I go into versions, I can see that I actually have multiple versions of this data set. So with the versioning in our offline and online store, you're able to get the latest version as fast as possible for your model and work, and also go to a point in time and understand what the data looked like exactly then when predictions were made using a specific data set. We also have the ability to derive features or schedule tasks on this data. If we go to my notebook lab, we'll see a more code based interface for feature store and for all the products that we're going to look at in all of the demos today. Each individual user has their own notebook lab with their private workflows, and it has all your favorite tools from Jupyter, including the ability to do model debugging and integration with GitHub for collaboration. Every environment comes with sample notebooks from H2O that walk you through how to use our products. And these are get connected. So anytime there is a release to the product, the notebook versions will all change. So you always have access to the latest and greatest. Another benefit of running your notebooks directly in the notebook lab is easy authorization. So if I wanted to run any of these code or APIs locally or in a production server somewhere else, I could, but I would have to um, fetch an authorization token and, and do manual login. When it's all running in one environment, I can log in really quick and easy automatically. If we look at our data engineering notebook, we can see the project that we just saw in the feature store UI created here and registered with a specific name and a specific data set schema from our file, which in this case originally came from S3, but we could bring in data from any of our favorite data warehouses or clouds or a local machine as needed. After we have registered a data set, we could then use this in our own pipelines. Here we're retrieving a specific row in our data set or even ingesting new data. And this is where we're creating new versions of the data set. Now we could use code from a different point of view, a data scientist, to actually connect to an instance of driverless AI and import this data set into that instance. So let's see what that looks like from the UI. Here I'll go to my AI engines and I already have engines running, but if I do create engine, this is where we try to make it really helpful for maybe folks that aren't tech experts. So you might not know how many CPUs or memory you need, but you probably have a good idea of if your data set is big or not and what you're trying to do. Are you trying to run automated machine learning? Are you just coming back later to look at your data or results? Or are you trying to do an image or NLP use case on really large amounts of data? When you choose one of these, it will automatically size for you the machine that you need to get your job done. And then we have auto timeout so that even if your data scientist forgets to turn off their instance, resources will be saved automatically after an hour of idle time. All right, let's jump into the instance of driverless AI we already created and that we used that Python code to import the data. If we wanted to, we could also add a data set from feature store from the UI or from any of our favorite data locations. We have all in driverless AI the projects that we're working on. So here we can see our credit default project that has our data sets. And we went ahead and split the data sets into training and testing in our data science notebook. When we click on a specific data set, we have a lot of options for data prep and visualizations. Um, AutoViz will automatically create 
different data set visualizations on top of our data and allow us to understand how it works. And we can also have access to splitting and training and testing. And we have a series of wizards that help maybe novice users understand how to best do time series or joining data sets. We also have access to live code to directly edit the data as needed.